I'm Patrick Sang, global citizen, investor. Join me as I talk with global influencers for their insight, wisdom, and how they overcame their own personal challenges. Sharing positivity, overcoming challenges, creating one world together. I'm Patrick Sang, anything is possible. Welcome to another episode of Anything Is Possible. It's a fireside chat. We're in Monte Carlo, Monaco, Grimaldi Forum with good friend Christian Moore. Christian, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Patrick. Where are we and what are we doing here? Where are we? Well, we're sitting in a basement of the Grimaldi Forum in the uh, festival of the Monte Carlo Streaming Festival. So I understand you're one of the founders. Um, what is this Monaco Streaming Film Festival? Well, it was to bring something uh, different to what were the festivals going around, whether they're film or television, and no one was ever focusing solely on the streaming platforms. So just outside of film or the television content, even shorts of TikTok and so forth, and really to propel not only the technology, but to create a link also between the filmmakers and the streaming platforms as the distribution source. And obviously you, you come from a background of media, mm -hmm. from a young kid to, to now. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen the changes? Oh, drastically. I mean, you know, growing up, there would be one or two films of action or note that you would think of, a Raiders of the Lost Star or Star Wars come out in one year. Now it's, it became weekly. And then uh, and the budgets have changed, the demand has changed. Um, it was a natural evolution, obviously, for there to be a streaming service that is uh, helping the distribution. So just too many ideas. And, and do you think that... Um the streaming will replace theatrical releases? I, uh, it is a tough one. I don't want to say it. Um, I think that film will always be there. The big screen will always be there. Um, so much is lost on an iPad um, when you're looking at uh, a film and the production value that goes into it. So COVID is the only reason we would be mentioning that today predominantly because we've been forced out of the theaters to only have the streaming platforms to rely on for entertainment. But it did show us that it is just as efficient and, uh, and if not more, more so efficient, at being able to deliver what the directors and filmmakers want. And what is the sort of like, uh, vision of the festival moving forward? I think it really is to gain, gain the, the, the strength so that what we can do is really unite. My, my, my position in this was really to allow filmmakers to have access, easier access to streaming platforms. And, uh, and having a, a festival like this and a platform that we build around that allows for access for filmmakers to, to, to be able to get their films directly distributed with the, the platforms. And what about from a, you know, I'm, I'm more of a tech guy. What, what about for the, the technology people or the technology investors? Oh, how, how can they benefit from this? Oh, very much so, because to hear directly from the horse's mouth is something that we haven't really heard of or heard from in the past. So to be able to unite that, those two elements in, and the tech, as you know, is, is phenomenal where it's going. And certainly the streaming offers a whole new range of entertainment possibilities um, for, the, for the entertainment industry. And uh, what are the plans for like other cities and other festivals? Well, it would be nice to, for, for us, it's always been our intention to get, get this out everywhere. So for us to be able to do this in, uh, in multiple territories throughout the year, to, to bring this as a festival, because wherever you go, there are tremendous amounts of content providers. There are platforms in, in countries all over the world. So I think that this translates well everywhere, just as a film festival would. Sure. And will it eventually become completely virtual or not? I think there's always going to be the virtual component. This is a hybrid event. When we set uh, out to do this event, we were only focusing on the virtual. And when things started to open up a bit, we then realized that we could make this a hybrid event. But our focus has always been on the virtual side, so it's accessible everywhere. Sure. And let's talk about a little bit about yourself and how we try to inspire young people. So success, what, what, how do you define success and how do you go about going oh, to get it? For me, I mean, well, being the top of what you do, being successful is knowing that you're good at what you do. But uh, for me, I think success is, is, is what I've learned in my life, certainly being uh, very family orientated, um, being brought up that way, contentment. If I'm content, I'm successful. I agree with that. And um, how would you um, describe, you know, how your life and work ethic is? Mm, 
been redefined. Um, certainly managing a, a, a big family uh, has redefined how I work. Yes. Um, but all the same, not much has changed. You know, I think the, the key to, to working and certainly in, in film production or in the financing or behind the scenes on the post, it really uh, is, is just pers perseverance, persistence and perseverance. As long as you stick to those two rules, you'll always achieve what you want. I know there are instances where you didn't persevere or weren't persistent enough mm. and oh. you look back and you think that maybe I should have put in more time. Well, I think, I think it comes with age that you realize that if you apply yourself, you can achieve things you didn't think you could. And I think there's certainly an element of when you're younger, you have a gusto for life that you put things forward and you do them. But then fear does come into play when you get just a little bit older out of adolescence and you, you start to realize that um, things don't go always the way you'd like them to. And then you become a little more hesitant. I think that that's always been the case, just ignorance and the bliss of that when you were younger doesn't change that fact. So as you get older, you just realize that you just got to do it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I think that if you apply yourself and you bring the right people in, it'll always work. Sure. And what's your life ethos, Christian? Oh, contentment, being happy. Yeah. I like to do uh, uh, as, as, as little as possible <laughs> as, in as much as possible. Sure. So. Um, Minimum input, maximum output. Exactly. Understand. No, that's not really worked out tremendously <laughs> for me, but okay. I'm okay. still one of them. And then obviously yesterday we, we, we went to a, a great event at the Ambassadors mm -hmm. uh, where we uh, celebrated uh, Sir Jeffrey Kent, mm -hmm. who's done amazing things. Um, tell us a bit more about the Ambassadors and the mission. The Ambassadors Club is a wonderful um, uh, association. This was set up in 1973 by Princess Grace and Renier to uh, uh, bring the Monaco residents together to help propel the word of Monaco to the rest of the world and the values that Monaco holds. And as we've gone through from 73 to now, that has changed and, and even more so become more necessary because the message that's coming out of Monaco is one of the most important and it is about sustainability, it is about the environment. So this particular club, which is uh, for residents of Monaco and for people who share a like-minded view for impact investment, sustainability, and certainly carrying what the Prince's ethos is here in the Principality, um, is to have wonderful gatherings, bring like-minded people together. And as you saw last night, people, uh, when you bring these kind of people all in the same room, it ends up being a good evening and conversation is, uh, is on ideas and, and I like the idea of, of bringing great minds together where ideas can be discussed and sure. that's the purpose of it. And I think um, you know, ideas need to be crazy so that they can be thought of and then when they're implemented then they can change the world. Absolutely and that, that, that is the point. You know it's a lot of what I do, um, what inspired me in Prince Albert's efforts with the Albert II Foundation um, was to create Global Environment Media which is a company we established uh, last year here. We launched our television channel about eight months ago. Um, and it's uh, focusing on the environment, taking the 17 categories from the United Nations uh, on sustainability, condensing them to nine, and being able to aggregate content from over 150 partners that we have at the moment, thereabouts, um, with a very strong advisory board to help guide the narration of this and deliver a platform which is educational for children, well, actually for all ages, for, for children, grandparents, but to learn about the environment, to learn about every aspect of it, but more so the solutions which are presented to help us with what we know are the challenges that we face in front of us. And, and these challenges aren't down the line. These are here now, and they are going to be far more prominent in our lives over the next decade. So we need, the, we need solutions. We need solutions and we need more awareness and we Absolutely. need a... Uh, I guess the, the hope is that young people are a lot more aware and more conscious of trying to help with issues such as climate change more than, you know, our ages and above. Yeah, I think that the, 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 unfortunately, I think we've run out of time. So the younger generation is inheriting a lot of challenges and problems. It's our generation and the gen this generation that's just coming up now that are very conscious of this, but the shift needs to take place. And so there's never, it's never too late to start talking about the things that are needed. Sure. And what's your view on, you know, I, I really appreciate and like it when companies and clubs and what individuals where we sort of combine work with 
very deep issues such as climate change, sustainability, and having fun. I mean, how do you see the whole you know, work-life balance where we try to combine different aspects to try and get the best output? Oh, I mean, it's a I mean, for, from from my my perspective, you know, uh, I followed my father's uh, guidance, and, and from what I could see, he achieved in his life. I mean, he dedicated so much of his later years towards uh, children and music, and this is from, you know, we looked at him doing this in the beginning and always thought it was wonderful, me and my brother and my sister. Um, but what we've taken out of that 20 years and having traveled with him and seen that effort, life did not feel right not giving back. So whatever you do in life, you've got to give back. And I think that's part of the problem we're living today. Mm -hmm. People live in bubbles and these bubbles didn't exist before. The community idea kind of has gone away a little bit or what it should be. And, and the world needs to stop living in individual bubbles. We need to realize that we're all part of this and we all have to be part of the solution because we are the problem. Sure. And how do you think we should tackle such a bubble problem? Oh, well, I think for the first step is, is through media. Being able to start um, propelling forward ideas and solutions, informing people of what are the problems or challenges, as we like to say but more so presenting solutions for them, not just the doom and gloom. I think too much of what yes. we've heard over the last decade has been horrific. There have been studies with children done where children really believe that there's nothing that they'll be able to do in their lifetime to fix what they believe is coming. And, and we know that it is coming, but there is no end to in human ingenuity. We can overcome things, but we need to come together. And, and I think that by having the general public be very aware and informed of what exists in the world, that will help push industry because then industry can't put a blind cover over what there is as an alternative to what is being presented today, mm. from plastics to distribution and to, to batteries and how we use transport and certainly how we integrate agriculture and almost every industry. I mean, there are some amazing companies that are doing turns today in the fashion industry, which is one of the biggest polluters um, to the automotive space, as you know. So we bring all of that to light, and I think that's the way people can start to change. It's like a shift. It's almost like how Hollywood is through the years, or certainly over the last 15 years, how many apocalyptic films are there, how many series. You know, the, the idea of the world ending 50 years ago, if you showed it in a film, was horrific. War of the Worlds scared yeah. half of New York. I mean, Orson Welles, it was a big joke when, yeah. when he played it over the radio. Everyone <laughs> thought that there wasn't any invasion coming. Today, it's like, wow, oh, so they're here. You know, we have become accustomed to yes, it. And right. I think that we have to do the same thing for being socially responsible. People need to be aware of what needs to happen. Sure, I agree with that. Um, so, you know, the, the purpose of the podcast, Christian, Anything is Possible, is to inspire young people, yeah. to share positivity, overcome challenges. And then three is to create one world together, which means we want to promote diversity, to have a more inclusive society, to have less prejudice, to everyone that everyone's equal what advice your number one advice would you share with young people ignore negative follow your heart follow what you know is right and never give up because um i mean that's the basis of how we've survived as a species on this planet absolutely anything's possible christian congratulations to the festival um it's a lot of work it's been successful hope the, the next few days will be even better and uh hope we can contribute for the next event hopefully in a different city hopefully hong kong will open up we'll do something sounds wonderful um the ambassadors will help as much as possible mm -hmm. and um keep it up and you know you epitomize anything as possible exactly thank you very much thank you thank you